Assalamu alaikum dear students how are you all hope you all are doing good today we are going to study the lesson the earth and its living world but first you have to answer me some questions tell me where do we get water from of course it's well pond lake borewell sea etc where do we lay the foundation of buildings exactly in an open space what need do we meet through breathing it's none other than oxygen of course we need oxygen for breathing from where does this earth get light and heat it's the one and only the sun so we fulfill our need through water land and gas on the surface of the earth we find land in some places and water in others the earth is surrounded by atmosphere there are living things in water in land and in air water land and air constitute envelopes of the earth namely the hydrosphere lithosphere and atmosphere the biosphere spreads in all other three spheres as you can see in the picture so first we are going to study the lithosphere and the hydrosphere and later the biosphere we know that our earth is consist of water two third of the water and one third of the land now first we are going to learn about lithosphere when we travel in a hilly regions we see a layer of soil and rocks along the road cuts we see grassy expanses of land in some places and only sand in others the land is covered with crops in some places and with forest in others Sometimes we get to see the deep layers of soil into which tree roots spreads. At the other, we see rocks split apart by the tree roots. There are gentle mountain slopes as well, and cliff rocks. All these features are a part of Earth's lithosphere. The lithosphere extends under this water too. Now we are going to study about continents. As you can see in the picture, about one third of the surface of the Earth consists of land. a vast continuous stretch of land is called the continents there are seven continents on the earth asia europe africa australia north america south america antarctica these all are the seven continents on the earth Asia is the largest continent and Australia is the smallest. But students remember that the land is not even in all places. The unevenness give different shapes to the land in different places. They are called landforms. Now We are going to study various landforms. These are peak, mountain, 
island seashore valley hillock river ground plateau pass plain land those pictures are form of various landforms now moving ahead we will see two third of the earth surface is covered with water most of the water is in the ocean ocean water is salty there are five oceans on the earth these oceans are atlantic ocean pacific ocean indian ocean southern ocean and arctic ocean just have a look on the picture students you can clearly see the land along the ocean this part is called coastal region water bodies of different shapes and sizes are formed along the coast for example sea bay gulf strait creek all these water bodies are a part of the ocean now we are going to learn about hydrosphere water on the earth surface ground surface water vapor in the atmosphere together makes the hydrosphere there are many streams of water flowing over the land this water is not salty but fresh these streams of water may be rills brooks river rills brooks streams these all join each other to form rivers rills are the large, smallest and rivers the biggest tributaries rivers we join to make a bigger river are called its tributaries as you can see there are very small small rivers and they will join to make a bigger river these are called tributaries in some places a river cascade down a sudden drops means a small river down the sudden drop this forms a waterfall but remember that all rivers eventually flow in the ocean a water body formed by water collecting naturally in a low lying area of land is called a lake now we'll see water in the form of ice water particles in the clouds freeze and in cold region they come down in the form of snow when layers of snow piles up on the ground they form ice 
Glacier When layers of ice piles up in a low-lying area, they become enormous in size, very big in size. This huge mass slips down a slope at very slow speed. This is called a glacier. Next is iceberg. There are also huge blocks of ice floating in the sea. They are called icebergs. Now we'll have a look on groundwater. Beside all the water bodies on the earth's surface, there is a lot of water stored in the underground layer of rocks. It is called groundwater. We reach this by means of duck, well and bore wells etc. Now we will have a look on atmosphere. The envelope of air around the earth is called the atmosphere. There are several gases in the atmosphere like nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, some water vapor and some inert gases in a small quantities. There are five layers of the atmosphere. These are troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere or ionosphere and last is exosphere. The layer that extends from the earth's surface to a height of about 13 km is called the troposphere. The condition in the troposphere changes continuously. They affect the living world to a great extent. The surface of the earth gets heated due to the heat it receives from the sun. Hence, the air nearest the surface is hottest, but as we go higher in the troposphere, it becomes cooler. Almost all the water vapors in atmosphere is contained in troposphere. That is why all weather related phenomena such as formation of clouds, rain, fog, wind and storm takes place in the troposphere. The air on high mountain is rarer than the air near the earth's surface. You know, aeroplane fly in the higher parts of troposphere. There, the air is very rare. Therefore, the arrangements have to be made to ensure that the passenger get enough air for breathing. Next, beyond the troposphere, up to a height of about 50 km from the earth is the layer called the stratosphere. In the lower part of stratosphere, there is a layer of a gas called ozone layer. Ultraviolet rays coming from the sun are very harmful for living things, but the ozone layer absorbs them and protects the living world from those rays. So students, do you know how does it rain? But first, you have to understand two processes. The first is evaporation method and second is condensation. What is evaporation? The process of turning from liquid into vapor is called evaporation. As you can see in the picture that from the heat of a sun, the water gets heated and evaporates the water vapor and it goes up in the air. This is called evaporation. The process of vapor turning into water on cooling is called the method of condensation. Now we will see what is water cycle. As water vapor is lighter than air, it rises high up in the atmosphere. As it goes higher, it cools and condenses forming a very fine droplets of water. 
the droplets are so small and light that they float in the atmosphere forming clouds these small droplets join together and form bigger drops which are very heavy they cannot float such drops of water fall down on the earth in the form of rain these process of evaporation condensation rainfall go on in a continuous cycle this is known as the water cycle in nature this rain water flows into drills streams river and finally into a sea ice in a snow covered region also melts due to the heat of the sun to finally flow into the river now we learn about biosphere there are innumerable kinds of living things on the earth the various region of the earth differ in many ways we see great variety in living things that inhabits these different regions in different regions of the earth there are varieties of animals and plants they are typical and specific for that particular region for example we see polar bear is seen only in the snow bound polar region zebras are found in africa and kangaroos are found in australia similarly elephants and lions are found in regions of hot climate plants in all these different regions like hot region moderate region cold region aquatic region etc also show a great variety this variety is characteristic of those different regions living things exist in the lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere they also interact with these sphere this living world constitute the biosphere students always remember all animals plants and microorganism are dependent on one another they are also dependent on the spheres of the earth the biosphere is where they take birth live and die hope you all like the video thank you so much